Hello everyone! So one of my favorite types of artwork is surrealism. For those of you who don't know, according to the Met Museum, surrealism sought to release the unbridled imagination of the subconscious. Surrealism usually consists of real life and recognizable objects, doing things that would never actually occur in real life. It was popular right around when Sigmund Freud became popular. Just so you guys know, he was the founder of psychoanalysis and loved analyzing dreams. My favorite surrealist artist was Salvador Dali. He produced some of the most famous surrealist paintings, including one called The Persistence of Memory, which I'm actually going to analyze for you guys all today. This is a very famous painting that you're most likely either heard about or have actually seen in your life at some point. Some other names it goes by, which are actually wrong though, are The Soft Watches, The Melting Watches, or The Persistence of Time. The Persistence of Memory, though, is the only accurate title. This painting has been referenced numerous times in pop culture and TV shows and songs. One of the most surprising things about this painting is how small it is. I didn't even know this before I actually started doing this project. It is only a mere 9.5 inches by 13 inches. That's barely bigger than a preset printer paper. In Dali's book, The Secret Life of Salvador Dali, he explains how his painting came to be. In it, he says that he was actually planning on going to the movies with his wife Gala and some friends, but decided against it because of a splitting headache. Before bed, he decided to go into his studio to look at the painting he was in the middle of painting. It was a picture of a landscape near Point Leggette in Spain. He knew the landscape was going to be the setting for something, but he hadn't figured out what. Suddenly, he saw the image and knew what he had to paint. He then spent the next two hours and created his best-known piece of work, The Persistence of Memory. This was in 1931. He was only 27 years old and created this painting in two hours, and it has ended up being one of the most famous surrealist paintings ever created. It was done with oil paint on campus. Dali had a very strange way to paint his paintings, including this one. It was a form of self-induced hallucinations to access his subconscious. He called it Paranoic Critical Method. In a statement by Dali, he claimed, I am the first to be surprised and often terrified by the images that I see appear upon my canvas. I register without choice, with all possible exactitude, the dictates of my subconscious, my dreams. Even with this, his paintings are done with such detail, they look as if they could actually appear in real life. Now, time to analyze this painting. It is a painting full of meaning, and actually has different meanings for some of the things in it. Let's start with the most famous part of the painting, the melting watches. There are three different melting watches present. These are one of those things that have different meanings. According to some expert interpretations, they are to represent how time is eternal and always flowing. Other experts went for a much more scientific route and say the clocks represent Albert Einstein's new discovery at the time of the theory of relativity. This theory proposed the idea that time was complex and relative. It was not fixed. A simple pocket watch would not suffice to track such an elaborate idea. It could also be that Dali is trying to show that pocket watches are outdated and no longer needed in an evolving world. My favorite explanation, though, is from Dali himself. He says that the melting watches are simply like that because earlier in the day, he had seen some melting camber cheese under the sun, and that's what it looked like. Another interesting facet is the tree and what it grows from, just sometimes described as a box and other times as a table. Some analysis is described as a juxtaposition of nature and not natural objects, where nature grows out of something man-made, which is not natural at all. While it is sprouting from the table, the tree is dead and barren. No analysis I found had an explanation, but I think that it has to do with the same comparison from before. Through the influence of man, we have clearly altered the natural path of things, and some would argue that even we have killed nature. I think this is a hat tip from Dolly to some of the environmentalist philosophies of his time, which tended to assign blame to humans for many of the problems arising in nature. Look back at the table. It has very distinct lines and shapes, which helps bring to the attention to the central clock. Laying face down on the table, there is an orange watch covered in ants. Ants are a common theme in Dolly's paintings, often used to symbolize decay or disintegration. This is often interpreted as the decay of our sense of time and the falling apart of our arbitrary measures of time, as suggested earlier by the view that it shows Einstein's theory. Yet another interpretation is that it shows nature chewing away at things man-made, that what man makes will not last, and is subject to the decay of time itself. In looking at the landscape, there is a desert leading to the ocean in the distance next to some rocks. These rocks are often compared to rocky points in northern Catalonia, as Dolly spent much of his life there. The most common analysis of the rocks is that they are supposed to be hard objects in contrast to the soft clocks. 
with hard and soft being a common theme in Dolly's artwork. The hard rocks may represent the realities of life, or may just be another sign of nature untouched by man, depending on who you ask. The ocean is still, clearly reflecting the rocky point, and still extending across the painting. One critic called it a representation of the vastness of Earth. I personally don't see much of a basis there, but it does create an extension of the barren desert, extending off into the ocean, without a single bump. I think that this still might be another representation of the natural state of things. Overshadowing the entire landscape is a darkness agreed to be the shadow of Mount Pani, which shows up in many of Dolly's paintings, as his childhood home was in the shadow of Mount Pani. A side note, remembering the story about how Dolly painted this? He painted the background first. I think that the meanings of the background and the foreground aren't as related as some might think. I think the background landscape comes from his memories of his childhood and the place where he grew up, and the foreground has more intense meaning that may have been born out of his forced hallucinations. There also appears to be a flat board at the water's edge behind the tree. Experts are not clear, though, as to why it's there or what its purpose is. The gray object in the foreground is often seen as a humanoid or as some combination of human and animal, be it dolphin, duck, or just some large fleshy creature. Some reviews say that the figure is an example of metamorphosis, a common surrealist theme. This combination of human and animal often appears in Dolly's work, yet other interpretations see the figure as a form of a self-portrait. It portrays a fading figure, one without an exact form or composition. It appears with its eyes closed, suggesting a dreamy, trance-like state. Along with the melting clocks, some have interpreted this as a representation of how time seems fluid and non-exact when we are dreaming. You can have a dream that spans two days and only be asleep for a couple hours. Another viewpoint is that the fleshy creature is also melting, similar with the clocks, and was supposed to be a human, considering you can see eyelashes and a nose in it. From a design standpoint, the painting is unbalanced, with more foreground appearing on the left. There's significant open space on the right, which helps to direct your eyes to the foreground figures. Other areas of the painting draw the eye as they are emphasized by brighter colors and less shadow. This not only draws your eye to the left, but also to the rocks in the back. The proportion is not very consistent. The watches are scaled up and their large size helps to place emphasis on them. But the tree is small compared to the table and the human figure, which is often seen as just a face, in which case is proportionate to the pocket watches, but not to anything else in the painting. In any case, the variety of different elements in the painting helps to keep the viewer entranced and puzzled, leaving them to glean what they can from the painting which has many different aspects to look at. This fascinating, perplexing piece of art has captivated art lovers, critics, and people who know nothing about art. This painting is referenced countless times in pop culture, including Doctor Who, the Far Side comics, the Futurama TV show, Sesame Street, and The Simpsons. For a painting that took about two hours to paint, the impact has been huge, and that's part of the beauty of art. If you would like to go see this painting in person, it is currently kept at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, where it has been since 1934. And a big thank you to the following websites, journal article, and book for helping be my reference to analyze this painting.